Hello everybody, my name is Gwenelle Legal and I am currently a PhD student at the CA Letty in Grenoble, France. And uh, first I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to give you this presentation, which is about a new uh, parametric resonance magnetometer scheme based on elliptically polarized uh, pumping light uh, to obtain a free, measurement, uh, a free measurement of the free component of the magnetic field with isotropic sensitivity. So uh, to begin with, the sensors we are developing in our lab are based on helium-4 as a sensing medium and uh, helium-4 as a non-magnetic ground state. Um, to obtain magnetic properties, we populate uh, the metastable state with a high frequency discharge, which uh, creates a plasma in the helium cell, and we have a paramagnetic medium at room temperature. Uh, to perform magnetic measurement, we will use optical pumping uh, using the D0 line of uh, helium-4. Uh, on such uh, spin-1 states, we can perform several kinds of optical pumping, uh, and the first kind is made by using circularly polarized light, which creates uh, orientation in the atomic gas, and which is oriented along the propagation direction of the laser beam. The second kind of uh, optical pumping we can perform is made by using linearly polarized light, which creates uh, alignment in the, in the atomic vapor cell. Um, this alignment is directed along the light's electric field direction. And uh, once we created these uh, magnetic momentums in the atomic gas, we can apply a transverse mag magnetic field to them. And this allows us to observe uh, handler resonances uh, which is uh, a variation of the transmitted uh, light um, when we sweep the transverse component of the magnetic field. If we sweep the longitudinal component of the magnetic field, here uh, BZ, we do not observe uh, any handler resonance, meaning we do not observe any variation of the absorption of the light by the atoms. Uh, we can observe the same kind of uh, resonances with an aligned medium, uh, but this time we will have to sweep the components that are transverse to the light's electric field direction, which is the alignment direction. Uh, based on these principles, we can build uh, helium-4 parametric resonance magnetometers. And uh, we use parametric resonance mainly because it allows to measure all the components of the magnetic field with a single laser beam. So uh, we pump the atom with a lin linearly polarized light. And then we apply two uh, orthogonal magnetic field, uh, radio frequency magnetic field, uh, that are both orthogonal to the alignment direction and that are non-resonant with the Larmor frequency. Uh, this allows us to observe modulations <coughs> on the transmitted light. And if we demodulate the, trans the photodetected signal, we can measure the free component of the magnetic field at the first harmonic of each radio frequency field and also at the first interharmonic. Uh, such sensors uh, already reached sensitivities down to 50 femtotesla per square root of hertz for a bandwidth of around two kilohertz. Uh, since we can measure the free component of the magnetic field, uh, we can uh, operate the sensor uh, in closed loop. And with such a configuration, uh, the two axes that are parallel to the radio frequency field are well resolved but we have a much worse sensitivity to the third one, the one that is parallel to the alignment direction. So um, the question is, can we increase the sensitivity to this third axis, the Y axis, and also can we obtain uh, an isotropic uh, sensitivity uh, for the free component of the magnetic field? So uh, to do so, we can try to uh, pump the atoms using elliptically polarized light and on a spin one state, this will give uh, orientation that will be uh, directed along the propagation direction of the laser, but also we will have alignment uh, in the same atoms, uh, which will be directed along the major axis of uh, the ellipse. Uh, so we built uh, this experimental setup to perform uh, handler resonance measurement, but also parametric resonance measurement, <coughs> which is mainly made of uh, a helium-4 uh, cell, which is surrounded by two sets of coils, uh, one for applying the radio frequency field and the other one uh, for sweeping the static component of the magnetic field. Everything is placed inside the magnetic shield 
and uh, we analyze the light on the same basis as we pump the atom <clears throat> so that we do not have any polarizing optics between the cell and the photodiode. Uh, the photodetected signal is then either demodulated using a locking amplifier to measure parametric resonance signal or uh, simply we, we simply measure the DC absorption to for only resonances. Uh, with this setup, we will see how we can determine the optimal ellipticity, uh, allowing to measure the free components simultaneously, and also what are the optimal radio frequency fields uh, parameters to obtain isotropic sensitivity. Uh, so, using elliptically polarized light, as we saw, we can have both orientation and alignment simultaneously, and this means that we can observe uh, handler resonances, but and also parametric resonances with the three components of the magnetic field simultaneously. As you can see on the left uh, panel, you have the DC absorption with respect to the static component of the magnetic field, which are handler resonances, and they have uh, an even symmetric Lorentzian profile. And on the right panel, you have the demodulated signal uh, for parametric, parametric resonance signals. And these signals have a not symmetric uh, Lorentzian uh, profile. Both uh, graphs were taken for an ellipticity of around 25 degrees. Uh, so to determine the optimal ellipticity, um, we can study the Handler resonances dependency with the pumping like ellipticity. And as a recall, uh, for this uh, Lorentzian profile, they have an amplitude that I call A over gamma and an half, width, half maximum of gamma. And one can show that the parametric resonance magnetor sensitivity is proportional to the ratio A over gamma squared. So we uh, measured the dependency of uh, this ratio with the light's ellipticity, and uh, we obtained the following result. And as you can see, the sensitivity to the x-axis um, is always, we, we always have a sensitivity to the x-axis, which is which is transverse to both orientation and alignment for uh, all the values of the light's ellipticity. And for the two other axes, we only have a sensitivity when the atomic polarization is transverse to the given component of the magnetic field. So um, what we determine as the optimal ellipticity is the best compromise between uh, having a sensitivity to the three axes and the best we can have simultaneously for the free axis, which is given uh, at the crossing point of the two curves for an, uh, an ellipticity of around 20, 26 degrees. Uh, now, if we want to build um, a magnetometer, we will have uh, to apply two radio frequency fields in the same way as the usual alignment-based uh, helium-4 uh, magnetometers. But this time, we apply the radio frequency fields uh, along the pumping directions. Uh, we still have the free modulations on the photodetected signal that allows us to um, measure the free components of the magnetic field. <coughs> so, um, as a recall, you have here uh, what I define as the slope of the demodulated signal, uh, which uh, represents somehow the sensitivity uh, to a given component. And uh, with this slope, uh, I build this figure of merit that I call S, which is basically the quadratic sum of uh, the three slopes to each axis. And um, this uh, figure of merit uh, shows uh, somehow the overall uh, slope of the magnetometer. Uh, however, it does not ensure that the sensitivity is isotropic. Uh, here you have the theoretical calculation that I made uh, that are based on the three-step approach with the dressed atom formalism. And uh, here you have now the measurements that we performed for a slow radio frequency field frequency of 9 kilohertz. <coughs> As you can see, you, we have a, a rather good agreement between the theory and the experiment. Um, and now I will define a figure of merit that represents somehow the isotropy of the of the slopes for the magnetometers, which means that we have the three slopes that have the same values. And this figure I choose to define is uh, Ix, Iy, or Iz, uh, which is basically the slope over the sum of the three slopes. <clears throat> and we will look for when uh, these three parameters will be 
simultaneously uh, close to one third, so that we have one third of the total slope, which is uh, distributed over each axis. So uh, with a slight variation around one third, you have this parameter that is represented by the dotted area on the graphs. And the green dot represents somehow the closest point to the perfect isotropy where these three parameters are equal. And um, as you can see, this isotropic area is not uh, on the area where the parameter S is maximum, meaning that we have isotropy, but we do not have the best sensitivities we can have. And um, so we tried to bring this area toward the higher value of S, and to do so, we played with the last degree of freedom we have, <coughs> which is the frequency of the radio frequency field uh, that we apply. And we choose to increase the slow radio frequency field frequency from 9 kilohertz to 50 kilohertz. And uh, as you can see here, we managed to bring this uh, isotropic area toward the higher value of the parameter S. Um, for a comparison, I plotted the same uh, graph as, the slide, uh, at the, as in the previous slide, but this time I normalized it with um, the higher, highest value reached for a slow radio frequency field frequency of uh, 15 kilohertz. And as you can see, we uh, never reach uh, the same uh, value of S, meaning that the overall slope uh, is always lower when we have a slow radio frequency field of 9 kilohertz rather than 15 kilohertz. Um, I, I would like to note here that uh, the theory I developed and I presented before uh, does not really match when we have a slow radio frequency field frequency of 15 kilohertz. Uh, here you have the parameters that give rise to uh, the isotropic sensitivity with the highest uh, value of S, meaning that we have the, value, the highest value of the overall sensitivity. Uh, now I, will, I would just like to compare uh, this new scheme with the usual uh, helium for an alignment based parametric resonance magnetometers. <coughs> and uh, as you can see on the graph, uh, for the two well resolved uh, components of the magnetic field that we usually measure with the alignment based parametric resonance magnetometers, we uh, only have half of the slope with the new scheme. But for the third component, which was a much worse result, we have uh, improved it from a factor 11. And uh, for the free axis in the both architecture, we have a, a bandwidth of around two kilohertz. So uh, to sum up, uh, I showed you that using elliptically polarized light uh, to pump the atoms, we can observe handler resonances with the three components of the magnetic field simultaneously. Uh, if we apply two radio frequency fields along the pumping direction, we can measure the three components of the magnetic field. And uh, if we optimize the parameters uh, of the light for its ellipticity and the amplitude and frequencies of the radio frequency field, uh, we obtain the isotropic sensitivity that we were looking for. Uh, for such uh, an architecture, we expect a noise, a noise floor of around 100 femtotesla per square root of hertz for each component if we have uh, for a helium-4 alignment-based parametric resonance magnetometer sensitivity of around 50 femtotesla per square root of hertz. Uh, I thank you for your attention and uh, I'd be pleased to answer your questions. Thanks a lot for the nice talk. Let me see whether there are already uh, questions in the chat. Um, I don't see any questions. Um, yeah, well, we also overdrew a bit with the time, but uh, I think we should definitely have still a few a few minutes of questions. So uh, you do uh, a three-dimensional reconstruction of the uh, magnetic field vector, right? No, no, no. We perform a measurement of each component of the magnetic field. Okay, so you can choose which one you uh, want to measure, and then you measure that, or can you measure them simultaneously? We can measure them simultaneously. Uh, in fact, here, um, <clears throat> when we apply the two radio frequency fields, um, if we demodulate the signal at the frequency field uh, large omega 
for example, which is parallel to the z-axis, we uh, will have uh, an optical power that is proportional to uh, the amplitude of the z-component of the magnetic field. And it is the same for the y-axis, but at the frequency of the radio frequency field that is parallel to the y-axis. And uh, we have the last component at the first interharmonic. <coughs> The first interharmonic, so, uh, okay, that is the BX? Yeah, that is BX. Yeah, right, interesting. Uh, there's a question in the chat by Stuart Ingleby. What dynamic range in the bias field would you achieve with this sensor? Um, so, uh, if we are working in an open loop configuration, we will be limited by the, the width of the parametric resonance. Uh, which is uh, proportional to the lifetime of the atoms. But um, since we have the free component of the magnetic field, uh, it allows us to operate such a sensor in a closed loop configuration. And in such configuration, we theoretically have a, a, a larger uh, <coughs> dynamic range, since we always uh, keep uh, all the atoms at a null uh, magnetic field. <coughs> Cool, thanks a lot. So uh, if there are no more questions, maybe we just go to the last talk of this uh, session today. So thank you again.